Hello, hello, my name is Caroline and thank you for joining me today for another edition of Caroline Live Project Ideas with Raspberry Pi and Amazon Echo. Welcome, welcome. Today is Thursday, June 4th. It is three o'clock my time, Eastern time in the US, and I've got quite a show planned for you today. So if you are online, uh, please say hi in the chat box. Uh, so, so far we've got Scott Brown from Seattle. Hi, Scott Brown from Seattle. And we have Walter from Germany. Walter's one of my regulars. Hi, Walter. Um, welcome to the show. Okay, let's get started here. Uh, first things first, housekeeping. Number one, I am not a doctor, nor do I play one on TV. I cannot provide you with any medical advice. We do this every Thursday at three o'clock my time, 12, um, 12 Pacific and eight o'clock uh, Greenwich Mean Time. This is a place of positivity. I know times are hard right now, but we're gonna to try to stay positive throughout this time together. If you have any questions, please uh, put them in the chat box and I will try to answer them. Any questions from old videos, anything. I may not know the answer, but, uh, but please hit me up here. Uh, and then uh, last but not least, please mute your Amazon Echo device. I cannot edit out the uh my myself saying the wake word and it will probably trigger your device or wear headphones or whatever you need to do so that i don't trigger your, your device unless you want me to trigger your device uh that that can be fun as well hello richard w from lafayette louisiana uh, is that i hope that's louisiana and um so i think there's a hurricane coming from you so um, as i always say yeah everybody please stay safe please stay healthy here um, i want to see you back here next week hopefully and uh, so let's go over the agenda for today uh, so first, I always give my updates from last week, um, anything, any changes. So I have some good news and some bad news uh, as my, part of my updates from last week. So we will, I'll go into that. Then I'll go into my project ideas, Raspberry Pi, Amazon Echo, uh, Wildcard. And we're going to talk about the Raspberry Pi uh, camera today. I still don't have one, but we're going to talk about it. So if you want to talk about that, let me know. If you have any questions about your... Amazon Echo, let me know. And then I'm gonna reveal next week's video. Um, so I publish a video every Tuesday and then I do the live show on Thursdays. And that's how the schedule works here at the Caroline Live channel. And then last but not least, um, we've, we've been through a lot here uh, where I live in the United States. And I think I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about it. Um, but this is not a political channel, uh, so um, so basically, if you're interested in under in hearing my views, my perspectives as a YouTube personality, I'll cover that after the end of my show. Uh, so if you don't want to hear it, that's perfectly fine, and I'll say, hey, I've covered everything I need to cover for this show, and then you can turn off the broadcast at that point. If you want to continue listening on, my perspectives about current events. Um, and I'll try to keep it as non-political as I can, um, then it is, then that will be covered at the end, okay? And absolutely, totally, completely, totally optional, of course. Hi, Sam from Taiwan, hi. All right, so thank you for joining today. All right, next. All right, so on Wednesday, yesterday, I released the Raspberry Pi OS setup with SSH video. I hope everybody got a chance to check that out. If not, please uh, go back and check that out. Um, it was released yesterday at noon my time instead of Tuesday when I usually um, uh, do it because uh, Tuesday was a, a day for, there were more important things that we needed to discuss on Tuesday, so I held off. Uh, delayed my video launch until Wednesday for this week. So that's just a one-time thing. It's not going to happen again, uh, but there were serious things that we needed to talk about on Tuesday. All right, so that is that video is out now. And if you remember, if you were online last Thursday, I took a vote. Y'all got to vote on what was the next video, and this is what won, and that's what you got. All right, so that's how it works. Okay, next we have, uh, yeah, good news. Uh, Element 14 had a contest. And last two episodes of this show, I have put down, hey, I am in this contest, please vote for me. And so I wanna say number one, big thank you. Thank you, you guys, for voting for me on this, uh, on this contest. They declared me a top 10 winner today. So today the results were, uh, uh, were provided. So this is hot off the press. I haven't announced this on social media. This is the first time I've announced this, is that I am a top 10 winner in the Element 14 contest. 
Alrighty, so now let's I'll just show you the website if y'all are interested. All right, so it was called the Badass Online Film Festival, and they had a whole bunch of entries. I, I'm not the grand prize winner here. Um, I can't pronounce her name, so I'm not gonna try to. But uh, this is the there's a grand prize winner and then nine winners um, of of this contest, and then and then these are all of the en all of the other entries. So anyway, um, thank you everybody who voted for me. I am thankful, thrilled to win. Okay, so this I was hoping um, I was hoping that I would win or I would win in the top. 10 here uh, because there is a cash prize for anybody in the top 10 so i'm thrilled about that so thank you very much everybody who's been coming to my show and who voted for me okay let's see so before i move on it seems like i've got a few questions to answer all right let's go back to i'm just going to do the camera here so i can look at this all right walter says when i tried to start the downloaded file the windows explorer hangs no action possible just kill the explorer will the Bellina etcher which you've been using for also do the job Oh, that's a great question. Okay, so I'm sorry that uh, that did not work for you. So yes, uh, Belina Etcher should still work. So if you go into raspberrypi.org, and I'm going to go back to my browser here. If you go to raspberrypi.org, you go to Downloads, and then you scroll down to... Where was it? Um... Oh, yeah, here it is, Raspberry Pi OS. Scroll over here, Raspberry Pi OS. Scroll down, so if you download, and this is the one I recommend, is download the zip with the, um, with the desktop. The one I downloaded in the video for SSH was the light because we were just doing SSH. But you would hit, you would download the zip file and then you would use Belina Etcher and then you should be able to, um, to install this on your, micro SD card, all right? So hopefully that answers your question, but that's what you do. That was the old process when we did Belina Etcher, and it was kind of painful to like always go out here and check to see if there was a new version and then download that version and then and then download the latest version of Belina Etcher too. So I really do like the new way that they're doing this um, with the uh, Raspberry Pi Imager. It's really cool because it automatically pulls the latest version for you. You don't have to, you don't have to look for it. All right, so hopefully that answers your question, Walter. Next question, um, Scott Brown says, I may have too many Echo devices. Very frustrating when working with dropping in. I want to use my Echo Show to drop in with video to another Echo Show, but my other Echo Show keeps on cutting in. Arr, arr, oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> So uh, I, I have made a video about this dropping in when you have multiple uh, Echo Show devices. And, um, and so, I, so I, I'm assuming you watched that video and that's why you're trying to drop in on each other. So for example, you know, maybe I have a, I have a pet. Uh, for, for me, you know, I'm, I'm dropping, I've, you know, there's a pet and I put the Echo Show in front of her and then I can kind of drop in on her. Uh, what I have to your point Okay, Scott, what I have noticed, and I do have a whole bunch of Echo Shows in my little condo here, is the one, when I started working with the Amazon Echo, and what I've said, let me go into just camera only. Okay, so when I started working the Echo, uh, Echo, and I had a whole bunch of them, I made all these videos, and I'm like, it's the closest one to you that's gonna respond. And now I've noticed in my own home, if I have one that's right in front of me and I have one that's 10 feet away, the one that's 10 feet away usually responds. It's really annoying. I don't know why that is. So yeah, I think I'm having a little bit of that same problem. I thought it was just me and the way my voice carries uh, and and yeah, but that I have kind of noticed that. So sometimes I'll just go to my Echo Show and just kind of whisper and still the other one will pick up. So yeah, I totally feel your pain here. Sorry about that. All righty. Okay. So Sam says, congrats, uh, Caroline. Thank you, Sam. Walter uh, says the PGM flashing the SD did not work. Okay. I think you have bigger problems if the, if you, if neither method works and I would check to see if, uh, if it's, if your SD card is right protected, I would check um, maybe you just need to reboot your computer. I would check other other things at this point if neither method works. All right, so Scott Brown, I saw you and Paul show it in an old video. Yes, 
Okay, Scott Brown, yes. Um, LOL, whisper, me too. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> okay, all right. So yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. And we can, we, I totally want to make this totally interactive and we can just uh, do this. So anyway, so that was the positive stuff about my, um, about what's going on with me in terms of the um, updates from last week. So now we're going on to the negative stuff. <laughs> okay, so uh, I am, so every week I talk about this. I'm 3D printing face shields, frames for face shields, making face shields for healthcare workers here in my community. You know, we're trying to make PPE. Um, so I've had a lot of uh, printer problems. I printed 127 face shield frames on my old ANET A8, and then it turned in its retirement plan on me. So I went out and bought a new 3D printer. I've made about, I don't know, 15, 20 face shield frames on my new 3D printer, and it's it's not going well. So after last week, last week I showed you like some really terrible prints that came out of it. Did some more work to my 3D printer. I got three good prints out of it, and then... Uh, I ran into a thermal problem uh, where the temperature is all over the place while it's printing and it's under extruding and it's horrible. The other thing is that I, I, so I printed this one out, came out great. Then I printed this one out and I've made, I've made a hundred. I've, this is Prusa. I bought this straight from uh, Prague. This is Talman 3D. I've printed a hundred on the, on the A9A. We've, we bought a hundred. We bought a whole bunch of filament from the Talman guys. This is brand new filament, by the way. Uh, and I printed a whole bunch and it was fine. So anyway, I was, so I finished this roll of Prusa um, filament. So then I popped in this roll and it printed it, except it was too short. So I think the last like 10 or 12 layers or so, I think it ran, it didn't run out of filament. It was a brand new roll of filament. I think I was having some heat problems and no more filament came out. And then, um, I didn't, it didn't print anymore. So when I showed this to the community, the, um, when I showed this to the Tronxy um, Facebook group, when I showed it to Tronxy, I emailed Tronxy about it, support about it. They said, check the thermistor. I was like, I've checked the thermistor. Okay. It's like the first thing you check. And I even took a picture and I posted it and I was like, Hey, this is the first thing I checked is this thermistor. It, first of all, I haven't modified it from factory. And number two, it is taped in there. It's, it's on there. It's not the thermistor. So anyway, nobody believes me by the way. <laughs> Except for my friend Sam, I think. Nobody believes me. And now I have a defective printer. Uh, so I, so, uh, oh, and, and then I did, and then the people at Trongsi sent me this email and said, and sent me this picture and said that I needed to adjust the voltage on the uh, main board. And number one, I can't get to the main board. Number two, I have a better shot of, 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 of shorting out the entire thing, okay, versus being able to adjust the voltage. I don't have the proper materials. You need a multimeter. You need a, um, a, a screwdriver that's not uh, metal. You need a bunch of stuff that I don't have to in order to do that, nor should I be expected to perform that kind of surgery on a three-week-old brand-new printer. So not happy. So spoiler alert, I will be releasing another video. I think I'll release, I'm going to try to cut it tomorrow and then I'll release it on Saturday. I'm going to release a video. Um, it's going to be a review of my Tronx D01 printer and it's not going to be pretty. Uh, so they, by the way, I did not get, get this printer for free. I paid over $400 for this printer. Uh, so, <laughs> so anyway, arr, so yeah, it's very stressful about, so now I'm not printing. I, I'm not printing face shields anymore. I'm dead in the water here because I had to give away my old printer. Uh, so anyway, but oh, frustrating, um, you know, because I'm trying to 3D print face shields for my community. Okay, so catching back up on comments, let's see. Alla Luke says, nice, true, absolutely. All right, Walter says, I could not get the PGM to work. Okay, oh, I already saw that, okay. Oh no, you said PGM flashing, the, the SD did not work. Okay, I could not get the PGM to work. Okay, and PGM stands for Raspberry Pi Imager. What does PGM stand for? Okay, but anyway, I think you have bigger problems, Walter. I don't know how to break this to you. Okay, sorry. Okay, let's see. Next, we are going to talk about Raspberry Pi new stuff. Okay, let's move on. This is a place of positivity, as I always say. Moving on. So my got a couple ideas for projects you guys can do. Um, this assumes that you have a Raspberry Pi HQ camera, high-quality camera. It came out, I guess, a few weeks ago. 
I have not been able to get my hands on one. I look at the Micro Center website every day and they are sold out. I mean, they sold out on the first day. I mean, and it's not close to my house, so I've got to kind of like stock their website and then figure out time I can get up there to buy it. So anyway, I have not been able to do this, but I think this is a great project. This is a great way to get started with your HQ camera. I've seen a bunch of photos taken with it. It's, it's really good. This camera is awesome, and you can buy lenses for it. It's, it's, like, it's like a poor man's DSLR. It's really cool. I like it. All right, let's see. Um, Walter says program. Okay, RPI, Raspberry. What does the G stand for? <laughs> the, the pro, oh, the, oh, the program flashing the, old, the SD did not work. Okay, yes. Uh, you might want to try to reinstall, reboot your computer. All right, uh, that's what I would recommend, Walter. Okay, let's see. So let's switch over to my browser and let's go over to, I found this project on hackster.io and this is, I'm gonna put this in the chat field here. This is Raspberry Pi high quality camera headless setup tips. This is really cool. I thought this was pretty comprehensive about he, he bought an enclosure and everything and he has all those instructions and you know he's setting up he's setting it up headless um, so you are accessing it through SSH or through actually no he accesses everything through VNC so I think that is awesome so I haven't talked much about VNC it, it kind of goes the same way as um, SSH except you instead of installing putty if you have a Windows machine you install VNC so I think it, I, I was really impressed. He gives you all the commands uh, as to how to control your um, HQ camera, how to um, take pictures with it, how to you know even set it up. So I really like this tutorial. I think that's cool. And um, so I think you should check it out if you have a camera. And this is the latest and greatest when it comes, well, second to second latest and greatest when it comes to Raspberry Pi. Of course, the latest and greatest when it comes to Raspberry Pi, of course, is, of course, they just last Thursday, they, they released the latest Raspberry Pi 4, 8, um, 8 gig. So if anybody has the HQ camera, let me know. And if you have, I think, I think somebody last week let me know they, they got the HQ camera. If anybody's tried out the new Raspberry Pi 4, let me know what you think about it in the comments because I don't have one either. Um, so it's $75 here in the US. So I'm not sure I'm going to buy one just because I don't really have a specific uh, use for it right now. I have the four gigabyte, the Raspberry Pi 4. And I've been using that. It gets really hot and I get really nervous about it getting so hot. And I, I did make a video about, you know, cooling it down and everything, but still it's, oh, it's a little bit, it makes me nervous as to how hot it gets. And I know this is kind of funny coming from the person with the 3D printer. <laughs> All right, okay, so next, excuse me here. All right, let's get back over to the PowerPoint. So next project that I found that I thought was really cool for Raspberry Pi is the Wi-Fi extender. So for you guys who live in really big houses, all right, which is not me because I live in a tiny condo, for you guys who live in a really big house, you, there's a Wi-Fi extender. Why would you need a Wi-Fi extender? So yeah, one, you live in a really big house and then you know now that we're all working from home, you know, you wanna be able to move your office around or you're having an office somewhere. The other reason why is I see a lot of people go out in their backyards and they're, you know, typing up emails from there or they're writing stuff um, in, in their backyard and maybe their Wi-Fi doesn't quite extend all the way into their backyard. So uh, that's another reason you might need a Wi-Fi extender uh, during, during this time. So I found a really cool um, tutorial for that also from hackster.io and I will paste that into the into the chat field and here is the truly wi-fi extender uh wi-fi repeater built around raspberry pi around ten dollars yeah wow that's a deal so anyway so you do need you do need another antenna and i think that they have i think he doesn't have a link to it that's kind of the downer about this that you do need another wi-fi adapter because there's one coming in and one coming out out of this um so anyway so i don't have i don't have the wi-fi adapter nor do i have need for an extended wi-fi because i live in such a small area uh so but hey i think this is a pretty cool project and i think you should check it out 
All right, so those are my two ideas that I have for um, Raspberry Pi for this week. I hope you enjoy it. And Sam says, not available in Taiwan yet. Okay, that always happens to you, Sam. So maybe you will have a friend bring it to you next time you have a friend visit. So um, anyway, yeah. So sorry, it's not available, Sam. If anybody else has one, wants to share, let me know. All right, so those are my two ideas for Raspberry Pi. Let's move on to oh yeah oh this is not raspberry pi but if you have kids and this is this is definitely aimed toward kids i've done this as an, as an adult and i think really honestly adults could really learn a lot from this as well um, it's called creation crate and i have met at a maker fair i have met one of the content providers content makers of creation crate uh, david heman he's he's totally cool and everything um, they sell kits and you can buy into a subscription or you can just buy one kit. I have featured this on my channel previously. I made this memory game, like it played a little song and then you press the buttons corresponding to the notes and then it told you if you're right or wrong. And I built that from an Arduino, some LEDs, a little speaker and four buttons. And that was, that was a really cool project. And let's see if I have that. Uh, link. No, I don't have that link ready to. Oh, I do have that link. Light and sound memory game with Creation Crate. I have, I have featured that on my channel. Uh, in the in the past. So the reason I'm bringing this up is if you have kids or you have just older adults who are just interested in learning about technology or you know they want to get started making. Um, Creation Crate sells these kits. You can buy it from creationcrate.com. But what I thought was really super cool, and of course the Creation Crate people didn't tell me I could do this, so um, I can't do this, <laughs> is that they are now on Gold Star. I don't, if you're not familiar with Gold Star, what Gold Star is or was prior to COVID-19 is they sold discounted tickets to theater events or musical events. So, you know, Pre-COVID-19, we were all we were packing ourselves into theaters uh, to watch plays and movies and you know concerts and everything. And you could get a discounted ticket to a lot of different concerts. And I subscribed to the Gold Star. I like going to shows. Okay, so anyway, I'm on the Gold Star mailing list. And one day, lo and behold, it's they they have to pivot their business because there are no more concerts, um, you know, no more large venues with large gatherings anymore um, because of COVID. And so they are selling the Creation Crate kits at a at a slight discount. Uh, so if you are interested in doing the Creation Crate, I would recommend that you go to Gold Star and uh, and check this out. So you can get a little. So I don't. I'm not making any sort of commission on on. Um, I'm not making a commission on you know pushing Creation Crate on Gold Star. I'm just telling you this because it's a discounted Creation Crate box versus a full price Creation Crate box. But let's go over to my browser and I'll show you. Gold Star, Creation Crate, Bluetooth speaker. So these are the uh, different projects you can choose from. And so you notice it says get tickets, but really you're buying a kit. You're not really getting tickets, but that's because Gold Star used to be a ticketing, discount ticketing agency from the, from, you know, for concerts and stuff. But there's, so they haven't changed that little button yet. But anyway, uh, you can get a discount on, on these projects. If you're interested in doing that, I highly recommend it. All right, so let me catch up on on this on these comments here. Let's see. Walter says, "Still wait. 64 meg is coming. Yes, we are waiting. We are going to have a new version of the Raspberry Pi operating system coming out. It's a 64 uh, meg version because of um, the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig that just came out. All right. Yes. And then Sahin said, "All of you from Taiwan." No, I, it's just Sam from Taiwan. So Sam, talk to Sahin. All right. Um, Gold, Scott Brown says Gold Star Coupon Books. Yes, yes. I, yeah, I've done that. Uh, Sam says there is an add-on for Pi to cool it down. It's called the Ice Tower. Very cool. <laughs> okay. All right. Ice Tower. Yes. I think that's what I need for my Raspberry Pi 4 because it is so hot. Okay. Let's see, Karthi says, okay, I'm from, okay, every, okay, y'all are just having your own conversation now. You go, okay, that's cool. Y'all can just talk to each other while I just drone on and on and on. That's, that's cool too. That's awesome. No problem here. Okay, let's go back to my PowerPoint. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, so now we're moving on to Amazon Echo. Yes. Uh, so, let's, yeah, I'm moving on to Amazon Echo now. And 
a couple weeks ago, we had something called the MJ. She seems irritated. <laughs> right on. All right. Um, so a couple weeks ago, there was something called the Webby Awards. I don't know if you're all familiar with the Webby Awards. They give out awards and everything that's on the internet. You could ha win a Webby Award from your app or for making anything that's on the internet, that's on the web. And so there are categories where some Amazon Echo skills have won Webbies. So it's kind of a big deal if you win a Webby. That's like that's like a feather in your cap. That's uh, something I'd definitely put on my resume if I had won one uh so anyway i thought i would feature some of the winners of webby awards for amazon echo today let's see so now let's go back over to my browser so this is uh the webby awards this is you know um some of the so you can the, the categories are websites video advertising social podcast games so you, there are all sorts of categories here and there are categories for voice now so that's pretty cool and then if you go over to over here this is a list that amazon's put out of all of the skills that have won webbies and so you can see on here um, npr news won uh, voice bot chronicles on food network kitchen drive time um so let's see wait wait quiz by npr one two three math donate blood uh so oh this is this is this is hilarious okay so check it this out look at this um in the middle the bottom row middle there's a ww okay and weight watchers is one of the ones that won uh, so th I thought that was really interesting that Weight Watchers won. And then there's one, two, three math. Um, so anyway, I, I thought I'd feature a couple of uh, skills that I liked. So I did try out these skills um, before the show today, and I thought I'd just you know kind of demo some of the ones that I liked. All right, so let's see. The one I thought was really cool, and I think we should be totally pushing this. Just for selfish reasons, because you know, I, I think we need to be inspiring our next generation and STEM. You know, we need to be doing all the STEM pushing that we can. So I want to do. I like the one, two, three math one. So you just say, Alexa, launch one, two, three. Let's continue. Go ahead and say the answer, or say restart to start a new game. Uh, um, restart. Restarting the game will reset your scores of all difficulty levels. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. Let us start a new game. Please select a difficulty level. Easy, medium, or hard? Medium. Today's highest score for the medium level is 146. Let's get started. You can change your difficulty level at any time by saying, Alexa, change level. If Susan has seven pens, and if James gives Susan 20 more pens, then how many pens does Susan have now? 27. Your score is one. If Jennifer has 13 chocolates, and she gives okay. 10 Alexa, chocolates stop. to John. Thank you for playing one, two, three, man. Please give us a review if you like our skill. All right, so that was one, two, three, math, and it's all arithmetic questions, and it's pretty easy, quite frankly. So, well, I, so I think it's for kids, uh, but I think that this is a great way for kids to practice their math. If you have kids that of of that age, all right. So that was I like that one, and the other one I really liked was this fill in the blank one. It was called Wait Wait Quiz. So then you say Alexa, launch Wait Wait Quiz. Alexa, launch wait, wait quiz. Welcome back to the wait, wait news quiz. We're so glad you came back after what happened last time. Let's see what we got for you this week. You've already played this week's game. Would you like to try last week's? Yes. Hey, thanks for joining us this week. We won a Webby for technical achievement. That's nice. <laughs> That's, I once gave a dollar to a pit. That's funny I said that, and then they, you know, uh, yes. Despite evidence saying it's dangerous, anti-malaria drug hydroxychloroquine is being taken daily by blank. President Trump. 
That's right, President Trump says he's taking it. I drugs. Alexa, I stop. Oreo. All right, so it asks, Alexa, stop. So this, essentially this thing, it Thanks asks, listening. it asks you, um, it, it gives you a sentence and it says fill in the blank and it's, that's the way of asking a question and then you guess the answer and it tells you if you're right or not. So anyway, that's, that's um, I think, you know, so anyway, I will put a link right here. I'm going to copy this link and I will give you the Webby winners for you to check out and try on your own uh, for Amazon Echo projects. So that is your that is your project for this week for Amazon Echo. All right, next we have oh yeah, the wild card project. Okay, so wild card means it's not Echo, it's not Amaz it's not Echo and it's not Raspberry Pi. It's just something else and it's a project idea. So um, I'm not endorsing Rilo by any means I purchased this with my own money. This is my money here and this is a 360 camera. Okay, let me, let me hold it over here so you, hopefully you guys can see this. This is a 360 camera. So there's a camera on the front, there is a camera on the back. It's kind of like a GoPro and it does use the same attachment as a GoPro. And if you're wondering what this is, this is my bicycle helmet. Um, and this is this is kind of weird in that it's kind of cheap right now to buy one of these you can buy you know, 360 camera they usually go gopars are really expensive they're about 400 300 400 dollars or more you can get this camera for a hundred dollars or a hundred and forty dollars depending if you get a refurbished one or not but buy it at your own risk so as i said i'm not endorsing this product I bought one not realizing they had been acquired. So this company, Rilo, was acquired in 20, 2019 by another company. The other company said, we'll support it through 2021. We don't know what we're going to do after that. Best Buy bought all of their inventory and now is trying to clearance it out at $199 each. So for the quality that you're getting, it, this is it's a really good deal. But if there's no support after 2021, then so then, yeah, then you're in a world of of heart so that's bad but what i learned out of this is that you can it takes a 360 video so i'll show you a demo of that and you can upload it to facebook or youtube and i think there are more places and your friends can pan and pan around your video and see the 360 view and you can also edit a 360 video in final cut pro i learned that and they've got titles that you can use specific for uh, 360 videos so you can see all of the words or they have animations or it's, it's or they have specific ones because you can't turns out you can't I tried this this is more I just slapped on the regular titles that I usually do and you couldn't see any of them <laughs> when I went to upload it uh, to YouTube so anyway I w wanted to show you let's go back over to my browser view so yeah so if you're in the US 199 on on Best Buy right now and here is a video that I that I uploaded to YouTube. Now y'all can't see this video. All of you guys who follow me on YouTube, you can't see this video. But I will I will copy the link here because what I the way the video works is I have it as unlisted. So you you can't watch it unless you have this link. So I'm sharing the link with you now. Uh, so it's kind of a private video right now. So I bought this pre-COVID. Um, to replace my GoPro, I wanted to do these. I wanted to learn about 360 videos, and um, and then I realized, hey, they're they are discontinuing it, so that's bad. And then, uh, but but the quality is really good. It's really amazing. So here is I I cut this video together, and then it's paused right now just so I can show you the 360 stuff, uh, so that I can um, you can pan around the video. And this, I'm under a bridge right now, or under the highway right now, and I'm on my bicycle, so you can't see me actually. So this is, uh, I'm just panning right, 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 right. Okay, so you can see all the way around. It's a 360 video, and then if I go all the way down, you can see the top of my helmet. <laughs> is that is that funny or what? And then yeah, you can also look up in the sky too. So it really, this is really cool for the 360 stuff. Anyway, so if you want to watch the video, I'll play a little bit of it, or you can just watch it on your own when I, because I've shared the link with you. But yeah, check it out, and um, 
hopefully it'll play. And you can see as I'm as I'm cycling down the belt line here, you can see me see everything on the side. You can see the street as we're going down. So anyway, so yeah, that is um, that's a little video I cut together with my 360 camera and now I'm learning about 360 cameras. How cool is that? So not endorsing this, not paid to endorse this. I bought this with my own money and everything, but I just thought I'd kind of show you this kind of cool project that I'm working on. Yeah, so let me know what you think about 360 camera. If you have one, let me know. Okay, I'm going to pause that and go back to my PowerPoint, um, the wild card. All right, so that's my, that's my other project that I've been working on. And... Now is the great reveal of next week's video. Next Tuesday, I will publish a Plex Watch Together video. So if you are familiar with my channel, um, the, the videos that get the most views on my channel are, I do a Plex update once a month, and I am an influencer for Plex. It is a sponsored video, so no secret there. Um, they just released something called Watch Together. It's similar to starting a watch party on YouTube, except this is for Plex content. So it's um, stuff that's in your Plex server, or it is stuff on the Plex. Um, they've got all, they've got literally thousands of videos on the on their own streaming service and their streaming service is free uh, so anyway so you can watch together if you're having movie night you can watch together somebody in their home you and your home y'all are friends you've, you've connected through plex and you can watch the same movie at the same time be in the same spot it's really cool so anyway i will be showing you exactly how to do that next tuesday when i release uh, the plex watch together video and that is about it for the show today um, I just want to say to everybody, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you want to turn off the video now, now's a good time to uh, turn off the video. Um, as I said at the very, very beginning of the video, I said, you know, of this broadcast, I said, hey, there's a lot of stuff, uh, live broadcast, there's a lot of current events going on. I don't want to be political or anything, but, you know, if you're interested in my perspective on the current events, especially, I live here in Atlanta, Georgia, um, in the United States, and so, um, for example, the protesters went by my um, building yesterday. So anyway, if you want my perspective as a YouTube personality, I'm going to you know, talk about that for a few minutes now, and then that'll be it. But for the regular show, this is the end of the regular show. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you to all of the medical workers out there, all the grocery workers, all the sanitation workers keeping us safe. COVID hasn't gone away. We, I have not gotten a vaccine for COVID or anything. So I'm continuing to self shelter at home during this time. I want to be safe. I want you to be safe. So please stay home and be safe and be healthy. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, MJ says, looking forward to the Plex video. All right, yes, it's already cut. It's already all scheduled. It's, it's ready to go. So anyway. All right, so thank you very much. And that's the end of my regular show. Now this is the moving on to the after the Caroline live show. And um, so basically the reason I'm doing an after the show now is because, and this is a, this is not an exact quote from Albert Einstein. It's it's a little bit tricky as to whether he actually said this or not. Some people say he actually said this, and some people said this is paraphrased from something else that he said. But he essentially, Albert Einstein said, if I were to remain silent, I'd be guilty of complicity. And uh, so that's why I, I have to say something, and I just have to let you know what it's like for me to be a um, YouTube personality here. All right. All right, so... See, we've got Richard, great show. Um, MJ, 360 footage would be good from for from the protests. <laughs> Caroline, how to change nozzle A net A8. All right, okay, I don't have an A net A8 anymore, but it's about the same on all the 3D uh, printers. And I, there's a ton of great videos about that. So key thing that I learned about changing the nozzle out, which I did a whole bunch of times before I got rid of my A net A8, was that you have to heat it up. You heat, have to heat up the heater block before you um, change out the nozzle. And it helps if you have uh, you know, that little special tool, the hex tool, and you've got to hold in place the other one. So you got to, it's, it's really tricky because you got to do this without burning yourself. Huh. Anyway, so good luck on changing the nozzle out. It is not fun. And don't and don't break the wire to your thermistor while you're doing it, which 
ooh, is that wire to your thermistor is so thin. Oh my gosh. So anyway, I, so I try not to touch. I just I try not to touch that thermistor wire every time I go in. Alrighty. Okay. So um, so back to you know the protests going on here in the United States. Um, yes, I think yesterday was the sixth day of straight protesting, or maybe today is the sixth day of straight protesting here in Atlanta, Georgia, where I live. Um, my perspective, you know, if, if y'all know already, because I delayed my video, I usually launch a video on Tuesday. This week I delayed it till Wednesday because um, there was a solidarity event on Tuesday. We needed to have some tough conversations on Tuesday. We need to talk about um, the Black Lives Matter uh, and, you know, what's really going on here. So that was more important uh, for for the conversation, for me, in my opinion, to talk about Black Lives Matter, talk about racism, talk about what's going on here in the U.S. than it was to launch my video. So I delayed my video. My video launched yesterday. Um, and so I, I think y'all kind of know where my head is, but just to let you know, as a YouTube personality, um, I am racially targeted a lot. I do get a lot of racial comments on this, on this channel um, as comments in, in my videos. And if it is hate speech, I report it to YouTube as hate speech. It, if, if it's racism, I report it to YouTube. And so if, um, if it is you know, inappropriate, I report it as inappropriate. If it's spam, you know, I get a lot of spam too. I get a lot of inappropriate spam comments. I, I report it to YouTube. So I, I do read every single comment and I do report it. Um, and I do get a lot of racist comments, quite honestly. Um, and, and, that's, and that's awful, okay? I mean, it's good that it's not somebody face to face with me, uh, but it's still, it's, it's still not appropriate. And, it's, and it just dampens the whole YouTube experience for me because I'm here trying to put out quality videos. I'm trying to put out tutorials. I'm trying to put out stuff that's not politically motivated, not racist, not anything. I'm just, I'm just talking about technology, which has, which doesn't see gender or race or anything. So I, I, you know, it's, it's tough here. So anyway, we're having a tough, it is tough. Okay. So, but I'm trying to stay positive. The positive that I see out of, coming out of this is that we are starting to have some really tough conversations here and about racism, about, about white privilege, about Black Lives Matter. And we are just making ourselves aware and we're educating ourselves. And I feel really positive about that, that we're not hiding it under the rug anymore. It's out in the open now and we're talking about it. And that's, I didn't realize that we were gonna have to protest. I didn't realize, you know, obviously I'm against the, all the looters. Unfortunately, yeah, there are, there are looters, there are criminals who come into these protests and it's, it's, they're awful. They're not part of the protesting group. So I think there's, there needs to be a distinction made. There are uh, peaceful protesters and then there are criminals who come in pretending to be a protester or don't even pretend to be a protester who are, who are there to be criminals and, and who are there to steal and loot. And it just, it, it just makes the experience bad for everybody. But there are the vast majority you know, the protesters came by my building yesterday. The vast, that was, nobody was looting. It was just, a, it was just people walking down the road chanting uh, that they wanted justice. Uh, so anyway, that was, um, those were my thoughts about, about the current situation. I'm glad we're starting to have honest, difficult conversations about racism here in America. So anyway, that's, that's my thing. You know, I'm trying not to be political or anything. It's about human rights. No, it's not about politics. Anyway, so that's it for me. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Hung on to the end. I really appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you so much for watching today, and I'll see you next week.